All right, guys, I am back talking about the Nikon ZF. Now, I did a previous first impressions video over at Geek Culture a couple of weeks back, but I've had this in my hands for the past couple of weeks. But I want to discuss about another feature to this camera that I think a lot of you out there who have vintage lenses, Nikkor lenses, Voigtlander lenses, even Leica lenses are going to appreciate, and that is the manual focus capabilities of this camera system. There's been a lot of buzz on this camera, the design, the retro feel to it, the brass top plate, the dials, the build quality. I mean, people are really excited about this camera and I am too as well. This could be one of the most fun cameras of 2023, but when it comes to manual focus and using manual lenses, this may be one of the best cameras to use in that way. So let's go around Little India. Let's discover how the Nikon ZF pairs with the Voigtlander 50F2 Oppo, the 35F2 Oppo, and the ever elusive 58 1.2 knock. Let's do it. The first lens we're gonna try on is the Voigtlander 50 F2 Oppo lens. Now, this is a Z-mount lens. It has electronic connectors to it as well in the back of it, so you're gonna get all the readouts into the camera. This is a phenomenal lens. I've tried this on the ZFC. Again, that's an APS-C camera. This is a full-frame camera system. It is a full-frame lens. This is bitingly sharp, beautiful fall off. If you've not tried the 50 Oppo or the 35 Oppo from Voigtlander, trust me, you're gonna see some of the images here today. This is going to be a pair made in heaven. Look how they just match beautifully with it, the black paint to the black paint. It's almost the same sheen, the same design through and through. Kind of gives you that retro Voigtlander, Nikkor vibe to it that we've seen in the past. And I mean, it's absolutely stunning. This is a gorgeous lens, but it's also about the image quality. Let's go capture some people. Let's capture some images here in Little India. Let's see how good this lens is. And plus we'll talk about some of the features that make this one of the best cameras to use for manual focus. Let's go into this. So one of the great attributes of this camera system that makes it different from any other camera when you're manually focusing is subject detection and manual focus. With that gentleman right there, it detected the eye. So when I punched in for a zoom, get that critical focus, it goes right to his eye. It doesn't go to the center of the frame like other camera systems. Wherever the focus point is, it goes right to the eye or the face, whatever subject that this detects. That makes it so much easier versus other camera systems where you're gonna have to move that focus point to where you want it to be. It takes a longer time. Sometimes the subject gets a little bit nervous, a little bit antsy. With this, it's very, very quick. That means vintage lenses, manual focus lenses, this opens up a whole new world, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about later on in this video as well. Anyway, we're gonna capture this Vespa right here. Now, this does not do motorcycle uh, or bike uh, detection, but it does car detection. But nonetheless, we'll just capture this to give you an idea of the prowess of this lens in terms of how it performs. This is a beautiful place to be, especially in the mornings. People are lively, a lot of people are fun. I mean, this is just, I love this place. Let's go, let's check it out. <laughs> So in terms of subject detection, it even works with cars as they're coming down the road, which makes it again, if I want to zoom in, critical focus, I get it. Give you an idea of how it performs. But this 50 Oppo right here is bitingly sharp. 0.45 meters in terms of close focusing on this, which is pretty much part and parcel with these kind of lens mirrorless systems. It's, been, it's fantastic. I tried this on the Leica system before uh, with the M series and it worked good. But with the Z mount, I think for a lot of you out there, with if you get a ZF, if you want a manual focus lens, you want something more modern rendering, sharp, great colors, great performance, pick up this lens. It's worth the money, trust me. It is really, really that good. You know, one thing about using the ZF over the past couple weeks, which I found very interesting, of course, with the IBIS inside of it, it does make it, you know, shooting video and photography a lot easier. The image quality is fantastic. Even though it's a 24.5 megapixel sensor, same as the ZS, uh, Z6 II. Uh, watch out, JP. Vans are coming. We're in the middle of the streets of Little India. There is something to be said about the entire package that really makes this a very fun camera to use. And I think that's kind of excited, re-excited the Nikon community as well because they were looking for a full frame version of the ZFC. Obviously it's reminiscent of the, the FM2. And this delivers in more ways than I think people were expecting. Not only does it have technology that we have not seen in any other Nikon camera before, but also other mirrorless camera systems as I'm talking about, the subject detection and manual focus, which I have a feeling other camera systems should adopt and probably will adopt in the near future. But outside of that, I mean, using it, the battery life has been great. The performance has been great. The colors are fantastic. The great Nikon colors. There's really been no hiccups with this camera system whatsoever. I think you would say the grip might be the only thing, 
Again, there is a small rig grip, and also Nikon is going to make their own grip that will be sold in Japan, which you probably can order on eBay out of Japan's market. Uh, but outside of that, I think it pairs well with lenses like this. As I mentioned in my previous video, hopefully Nikon does make more retro-style, smaller, you know, compact lenses like the 40 f2 and the 28 f2.8 to sort of go with the system for autofocus. But with the speed of this subject detection with manual focus, you don't necessarily need autofocus, to be honest with you. And so let's continue on with the journey, capture some cars and photos and people, and hopefully not get heat along the way. May I take your photo, sir? Thank you, sir. I'm just moving on the eyes. One, two, add three. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's one of the great things about the system, again, and of course, having a retro camera like this also does make it a little, little less intimidating when you're on the streets capturing images of people because when you have a big DSLR, a big mirrorless camera system, it can be very frightening for people. When you have a small, vintage-looking camera, people think it's more of a hobbyist thing, and it is in a way, but it also it reduces that fear. And that's also what makes this camera very good for street photography as well. I'm sure a lot of you already know this, and through those who shoot film like myself do already, when I bring on my film cameras, it's so much easier to capture people on the streets, especially here like in Little India where everybody's on phones, everybody's worried about whatever people are going to post the pictures at. But with this, it's just nice and compact and not intimidating at all. Anyway, then we're going to move to the 35 Oppo, and then I will go to the 58 1.2 Noct for my final portion of this video. Let's do that right now. Now, in terms of the focus peaking performance on the ZF, is it as good as, let's say, a Leica camera system? Let's say the SL2, SL2S, or even the Hasselblad X2D? Not quite. You definitely do need to punch in a little bit more to nail critical focus. It's good. It's going to give you a good guideline, but I wouldn't say it's the best in terms of accuracy with focus peaking. It's not a deal breaker because most cameras aren't. But just to take note that you'll probably have to, you know, punch in and zoom in to really nail focus, especially when you're on a wide open aperture like F2 and faster than that. But uh, if you're stopped down to 5.6 F8, you're gonna be fine. But just a little bit of a note on that for you. But outside of that, the performance has been awesome. The IBIS on this, the seven stops IBIS, everything just stands still. It's so much easier to manual focus with this lens. I'm on the 35 Oppo right now. Again, very similar performance to the 50 Oppo. Not much of a difference. It's just a really good lens. But again, this is a little bit closer focusing at 0.35 meters versus 0.45 for the 50, which gives you a little bit more room to play with. But uh, in Little India, we've got these streets, we've got the colors of the streets, we've got the people. Let's uh, capture some more moments and let's see what this lens can do. I'm getting some great photos of people here. Usually this doesn't happen, but again, the whole look, the whole vibe of this camera just makes it so easy and so inviting for people to just want to take photos with it. I would ask him, but I think he's busy. There's something about manual focus. I know nowadays we're all about speed and precision, but that's why I like to shoot film cameras as well as you kind of go back to the more traditional way of photography where it's all about you and how you focus in and how fast you focus in to capture a subject, a moving subject, or just a moment in time. And there's something rewarding about getting a, a photo like that versus just picking up a camera, pop, shot it. It's great, you get the end result, is good, but sometimes the process is more enjoyable than the final result, you know what I mean? Anyway, let's get into some more alleyways, let's get some, some, more, some more urban looks of this, with this camera system. And also, capture some cows. Because we're in Little India, cows are sacred. Unfortunately, the ZF does not have cow detection, so I gotta manually do it. Maybe in a new firmware update, I'll have it. Cow detection, but not yet. Can't have them all. One thing to know about moving the focus point with the touch screen, right? Because you can do that when it's completely zoomed out. But as soon as you zoom in or, for, or you know, for critical focus, you can no longer move that focus point with the touch screen. You have to use the D-pad. So keep that in mind. 
it's a little bit of a learning curve because you think that you could use it on both ways, but you can't as of right now. Hopefully Nikon does adapt that for maybe in a future firmware update to allow you to do that because it is a little bit like I'm using the touchscreen, but now I have to go back to the D-pad, I have to go back to the touchscreen D-pad so it can be back and forth. I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but it's just something to take note of. I do wish the display was a little bit brighter. It's on max brightness right now. You know, with a little bit overcast, it's fine, but in bright sunlight, it's gonna be a little bit challenging. All right, so with the final lens we're testing on, the ZF is the very elusive Nikkor Noct 58 1.2. They made only about 12,000 of these lenses. They are quite rare to find, especially in good condition. Beautiful fall off. It's almost a dreamy look. It is different from a Leica Noctilux um, in terms of its character, characteristics and profile, but nonetheless, it is a stunning lens and we're gonna see how it performs on the ZF right now. The fall off the depth of field on this lens is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. As a matter of fact, I might shoot a couple of video shots just to show you how it looks on video as well to give you an idea of how this renders. It's a special lens. It's not a cheap lens. This lens can range anywhere from 3,000 plus US dollars up to 5,000 depending on the condition. It's an investment, but they only made 12,000 of these. They never made them again. So, you know, some lenses are like watches. You buy to collect, but you got to use them. Don't let them sit in a dry cabinet. Lenses are meant to be shot with, and this one especially. When you do stop it down, it does sharpen up, and it gets very, very sharp. But at wide open, it's still relatively sharp for being an older lens. Again, it's, you, you get this lens for 1.2, but you get the versatility of F2 and beyond. But at 58 millimeters, it's a beautiful portrait lens, kind of a pseudo street portrait lens, where you get a bit more versatility than let's say having an 85 or a, a 135 or 105 for that matter. But um, let me see if I can capture a few more people with this lens. And, See how it captures the skin tones, the fall off, the detail. Let's see how it looks. Let's go check it out. Yeah, using the rear display for that was a little bit challenging because it's not that bright and the focus peaking wasn't as bright as I was hoping it would be. Again, probably some settings out to change in the camera, but nonetheless, I just give you an idea of how the video looks and it's dreamy, it's gorgeous. It's got a little bit of a retro feel to it, but it's a 1.258 millimeter lens. It's rare, it's awesome. I love this lens. Hope you guys enjoyed that uh, session walk around Little India, trying out these manual focus lenses. Obviously, these are sample images to give you an idea of how the lenses perform and how the camera performs. Again, I'm not trying to create street art here, just giving you an idea of what you can expect using manual focus lenses with the Nikon ZF. Overall, I like the system. I think this is one of the more fun cameras to use of 2023 thus far. I think Nikon's got a hit on their hands. The design, the performance, the capabilities of the camera are gonna be great for most people out there. Content creators, hobbyists, people that wanna put their vintage lenses onto a camera system like this, or even manual focus lenses, they're gonna really enjoy it. There are some quirks along the way that I hope Nikon does, you know, iron out the kinks along with firmware updates, but they have been so good with that with the Nikon Z8, the Z9, especially in terms of updating the camera systems. What they do with the ZF going forward, I think it's gonna be pretty damn amazing. And I think this is gonna be one of the more exciting cameras for hobbyists out there in this upcoming year. So anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. And I'm not paid to sponsor for this video, by the way. I don't even get to keep this camera. It goes back to them. The lenses, big thanks to Rice Ball Photography to loan me the Voigtlander lenses. This Nikkor 58 1.2 is my own, but uh, so I'm a little bit biased because I got the lens. But outside of that, man, I really, really enjoyed the system. With that, guys, if you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. More content coming your way. Thanks again for the support, and I will chat to you soon.